he captured what I called the ugly mood of the American electorate. And I think he has personified uh, a great many feelings of resentment against the status quo. And that, that's why he won. Do you think we've underestimated the anti-establishment movement that is taking hold not only in the US but in other areas? I mean, look at Brexit as an example. Well, the establishments generally underestimate how much they're hated, particularly if they're cut off from contact with regular people. I think there is a, a worldwide backlash against globalization and its economic discontents, a backlash against immigration, a backlash against free trade. But there's also a kind of cultural backlash going on here, a backlash against progressivism. So we've seen this movie before, and it doesn't need to end in World War II. Not every authoritarian leader is Adolf Hitler. I wish I could get that message across. OK, so but are we going to see a trade war, a global trade war playing out? Do you think this wall is going to be built between Mexico and the US? I mean, these are the kind of the political rhetoric wasn't exactly friendly. Well, friendliness definitely wasn't something that Midwestern working class voters wanted from their next president. But is president. that what they're going to get? Well, I think they're going to get uh, hardball. I don't think necessarily trade war, but certainly there is going to be a toughening American stance uh, on NAFTA, the North American Free Trade Agreement, on US-China trade. Trump is going to deliver on a lot of what he said, but it will be diluted. He didn't do any of it. Then I think he would be a busted flush shortly after the inauguration. You've said that perhaps you know, we shouldn't really be fearing uh, Donald Trump, but a successful President Donald Trump. Well, I, what do I you mean it, by that? Uh, the way I put it to my liberal friends last summer was, your worst nightmare is not a Trump presidency. It's a successful Trump presidency. Those people who predicted stock market Armageddon uh, like my old enemy Paul Krugman, looked pretty stupid when the market recovered by 11 a.m. on the day uh, uh, that Trump's election uh, was confirmed. So I think what we see here is that some of Trump's policies are going to deliver results for the U.S. And I would be very surprised if growth did not go up. I'd be surprised if the dollar didn't strengthen. I think the stock market is going to rally because what we're going to get is tax reform. We now have undivided government. But what can go wrong with populist movements? Uh, remember, Trump is going to do fiscal stimulus at a time of near full employment. That just has to be inflationary. He's going to do crazily generous tax cuts, which will mainly benefit upper, upper income earners. All of this is going to seem like, gee, this really worked. And people will start saying, he's Ronald Reagan. We were completely wrong. The trouble with populism is that after a certain amount of time, look at the experience of South America, it turns out that you've bought short-term growth by creating medium-term monetary and fiscal problems. Should we be afraid about what the next four years are going to have in store for well, us? Well, some people are in a state of hysteria after the election result. Uh, I take the view that for all his many defects, and I oppose Trump's candidacy, I was a never-Trump signatory. I did not want him to be the nominee. Having said all that, I do not think that this is the end of the world, a sort of American 1933, and I do think the Constitution will constrain Trump. 